Hi everybody, this is Raj Kannan from Aptar Institute presenting yet another educational video. Today we will discuss the differences between stiffness, tightness, spasm and catch. These are some of the common terms that our patients use to explain their problem. These terms are also used by physios, massage therapists and doctors. Unfortunately, there is no consensus on what exactly these terms mean and how these symptoms are different between each other. These terms are often used interchangeably by both patients and doctors. The objective of this talk is to explain what these terminologies mean and when to use these terminologies in order to have a common language which in turn helps the patients to receive a right intervention. Let us start with stiffness. What it means? Some of the patients tell that their neck or back is very stiff in the morning. Here, the patients use the term stiffness as they have difficulty in moving their joint and experiences a sense of restriction in their neck and back. This restriction could be unidirectional or multidirectional. Hence, stiffness is regarded as a symptom which restricts the movement with or without pain. Early morning stiffness in the neck or back is the most common manifestation in patients with neck or back pain. They experience not only stiffness but also pain during movement. Here, one cannot pinpoint a particular muscle being stiff though a particular muscle area can be locally painful. Such stiffness in the morning can be considered as true joint stiffness. Similarly, in any post fracture, any post -fracture immobilization conditions, the involved joint will be stiff causing movement restriction. In this case, the stiffness can be intra-articular or extra-articular. But it is difficult to prove which structure in and around the joint is restricting the, is restricting the movement. But it is right to say that the joint is stiff. So, the term stiffness should be used to point a joint that has movement restriction. It is inappropriate to pin the term stiffness to a muscle. People call it a stiff hamstring, stiff trapezius. Stiffness is a joint manifestation and such giant stiffness could be due to many reasons. Frozen shoulder, post-surgical or post-fracture immobilization, and placing spondylitis are some of the examples where the joint tend to be stiff. We need to identify the reason for the stiffness and treat the patient accordingly. But don't use the term stiffness for a muscle. The next terminology is tightness. Tightness in strict definition is a length deficiency to passive or active stretch. I will give an example. If a football player gets grade 2 or grade 3 strain of his hamstring, after a period of recommended rest and immobilization, he will have reduced stretchability in his hamstring muscle. If you do the hamstring length test, the affected side range would be less than the unaffected side. The tightness here is a consequence of injury, inflammation and subsequent immobilization. So the extent of the tightness must be measurable and the reason for the restriction is usually soft tissue stretch that causing pain. With stretching and other soft tissue work, this athlete can quickly restore his original length which he was having earlier. So, tightness means a true length deficiency of a muscle when that muscle is subjected to a passive stretch. But some patients, though they feel that their muscles are tight, if they were subjected to a length testing, they would do very well and will have full extensibility of that muscle. Some of them are even super flexible to comfortably touch their hands on the floor but still feel that their hamstrings are tight. This is only the perception of having a tight muscle rather than a true mechanical tightness. So the perception of tightness is usually attributed to pain, sensitivity or other sense of heaviness over the muscle during rest and movements. Hence they do stretch in order to get the sensation go away. In the process, they stress the muscle more when it is actually not mechanically tight. But what should be treated here is the sensation or the perception of the tightness. Neural tightness or irritation of the nerves will make the muscles tender and wanting it to be stretched. Such sense of tightness will not go away with stretching. So a perceived muscle tightness or indeed a neural tightness, not muscular tightness. This neural tightness can be sourced at the spine or anywhere along the course of the nerve pathway. Nerve tension testing can be effectively used to rule in or rule out a neural tightness. For example, to differentiate hamstring tightness from actual neural tightness, perform a slum test. While performing a slum test, the foot dorsiflexion, the foot dorsiflexion or the head flexion reproducing the patient's hamstring pain indicates it is a neural hamstring pain. In such case, stop stretching the hamstrings. It will only worsen the problem. So, whenever you, your patients tell that their muscles are tight, you measure for a true mechanical shortening and treat them accordingly. The next phenomena is spasm. It is technically defined as an involuntary muscular contraction that is quite painful. Some doctors mention that low back pain is due to paraspinal muscle spasm. 
it must mean that the muscles are painfully contracting. But if you see in reality, these muscles won't be contracting but rather be very painful even during rest and pain will increase on any attempt to move. On touch, the entire muscles would be entire muscle would be tender. Many patients refer the same phenomena as a muscle catch. Typically, my patients say that they got muscle catch when they bend forward to lift something. People who get neck catch tend to think that they did not sleep in proper position or they think their pillows was not right. In clinical case scenario, a catch or spasm denotes the same. There will be a gross pain over the entire muscle that restricts the joint movement in one or more directions. Here, the pain will stop the patient from moving. As far as these neck and back spasms are concerned, they are all often neurogenic. Means any mechanical derangement of the disc that in turn irritates the dural sheath or the spinal cord itself can cause reflex neurogenic tonic and painful impulses to the muscles in the vicinity. The locality of the pain will be depending upon at which level the nerve root is compressed. Any attempt to stretch the muscle or release the fascia around them would be, win would be in vain if the original cause of the neural irritation is not addressed. Nor it is a facet lock or hypomobile segment which can be cracked to get rid of the pain instantly. So it cannot be fixed immediately and it will take time depending upon the severity of the neural irritation and how it is treated. It is this pain that most of the present generation is having due to their poor posture and lifestyle. There is no permanent cure for this sort of pain unless the postural factors are addressed and corrective exercises are being taught. Let us also talk a bit about muscle soreness. It is a generalized pain in the muscle as a result of unaccustomed activity or direct trauma. Delayed onset muscle soreness, otherwise called as domes, is a classic example of muscle soreness. Here, the muscle is eccentrically strained, microtraumatized, that initiates an inflammatory response that in turn causes pain. It can be encountered after a heavy new workout in the gym. Usually such pain needs no treatment as it will recover naturally in a couple of days. Other instances like direct impact trauma, like fall on the buttock, fall on the shoulder, can cause direct muscle injury that leads to muscle soreness. This soreness is a local muscle phenomena that usually go away in short time with or without intervention. Even in soreness, the affected muscle would be painful during stretching. So, to be called as soreness, it should be locally painful after an inciting event. For some patients, this muscle soreness may continue to persist for a long time. In such cases, it shouldn't be called as soreness because all soreness will recover in a week. In such long-lasting muscular pain, we could find myofascial trigger points which warrants deactivation of the same by dry needling or other soft tissue release. To summarize all, stiffness is a joint-related phenomena where the movements are restricted. Tightness is a true length deficiency of a muscle. Spasm or catch is a neurogenic manifestation of, of pain over the muscle. Finally, soreness is a local inflammation of a muscle due to eccentric microtrauma or direct trauma. I wish and hope that healthcare professionals use these terms consistently in line with what their patients actually have. Having a good agreement in terms of what these terminologies means will help the patients receive a right intervention. Thanks a lot for listening. Hope you liked our presentation. We will see you again in the next video. Take care. This is Raj Kanan from After Institute signing off.